Good evening, I'm Macy Marie. Con rain continues falling across the region today. Flooding, slides, and breaks in roads. Well, those are just some of the issues we're seeing in the area. We begin tonight talking about the cause of those issues as we are in a severe weather alert day. Meteorologist Paige Noel has more. Paige. Yeah, Macy, we're still seeing a lot of areas or a lot of issues around the area here, and that's really going to continue or even worsen as we head into those overnight hours. You'll notice on satellite and radar that we have seen rain really impacting our region all day, especially down into the Cumberland Valley, and the worst is yet to come. So as we scan this, guys, now looking at pinpoint Doppler, some of us getting in on a little bit of a break, but you'll notice that heavier rain out to our west. Well, that'll be making its way into our area as we head into the evening and overnight hours. We still have this flat flood watch and that is through Sunday morning as heavy rain moves in tonight and early Sunday morning that we've also been issued a wind advisory and this is until 7 p.m. on Sunday. We're going to see very gusty winds tonight then into really all day for your Sunday. So with that gusty winds, heavy rains, it's really not going to take a lot for those trees to fall down. More mudslides and rock slides are expected as we head into your Sunday as well. Those rivers will continue to rise and some will even crest as we head into tomorrow. So it's definitely going to be a busy another 24 to 48 hours for us here in the Weather Center. And we'll break down the full forecast coming up in just a little bit. Macy. All right. Thank you, Paige. And we'll talk about some of those issues more in just a minute. But first, we want to go to a breaking story out of Perry County. Highway 15 in Perry County is shut down tonight following a three car crash that sent two people to the hospital and killed one other. State police say it happened around 3 near mile marker 21. It's just north of the turnoff for Chavis. We'll continue to update this story when the road is open and with the names of those involved when we get that information on air and online at WIMT.com. Nearly five feet of mud is surrounding a couple's Pike County home. With more rain on the way, they are worried it's going to get worse. WIMT's Marianne Fletcher pulled out her mud boots to learn more. Wednesday, a mudslide greeted the Courtney's covering their yard. We tried to ditch it a little bit that night and didn't think it was going to be that bad. It was that bad. The next day, Randy and Delisa woke up to a big mess. We couldn't even get off our porch. We were actually trapped on the porch. Nearly five feet of mud covered the ground. His first thought? Oh my God. <laughs> now they are doing damage control while working against Mother Nature. We'll get through it. The grace of God, we'll get through it. Now, Randy says he's even more worried about another slide that's on top of this hill. It's about the size of a double wide. And with more rain in the forecast, things could go from bad to worse. And if it keeps raining and it keeps, you know, it may come off. And if it does, yeah, we're, we're hurting. For now, they are taking Buddy, Rescue, and Pretty Girl to another drier location. They don't like it. They're, they're used to running free. While they wait for the rain to stop. We still got the house, we still got our dogs. Hoping for the best. In Pike County, Marion Fletcher, WYMT Mountain News. Delisa and Randy Courtney say they are thankful for the outpour of help they received. And crews are dealing with mud and rock slides across the mountains, including several in Pike County. As the rain continues, officials know there will be more to come. In Pikeville, Public Safety Director Paul Maynard says city crews do everything they can to help get the roads back open as soon as possible after a slide. But our main goal on slides is, one, we want to make sure our workers are safe. If these slides are active, we may just have to babysit them for a few minutes and let that slide come in. But our main goal is to get the roadways open, make sure lives are not in danger, and get it done as quickly as possible. The Kentucky Transportation Cabinet reports several active slides they are working on right now in several different counties. And in Raccoon Creek, that's one of those slides in Pike County. A mudslide knocked out power to more than 260 homes. Right now, workers are cutting down trees. Then Kentucky Power can come in and fix the lines. Once the lines are fixed, Transportation Cabinet District 12 workers will be on scene cleaning up the mess. It will take more than four hours to be completely cleaned up. Officials say please avoid the area if possible. Another slide we want to tell you about, this one in Whitley County. Crews say they are out trying to control traffic at the slide on Kentucky 92 East. They will likely be in the area cleaning up for several hours tonight and do not know when the road will be clear. 
In Estill County, the Kentucky River is expected to rise to almost 30 feet by tomorrow. Officials have already closed several roads due to high water. Our sister station, WKYT, talked with one man who lives along the river. He's paying attention to it. Right now, he cannot even see his boat dock. It's under about 10 feet of water. It's probably about five feet down from what it was a couple days ago, which was actually you can see that bank right there is about three feet. It was about three feet from that bank with the rain we're getting. Hopefully it doesn't come over the bank. Emergency management say the river will continue to rise at a steady pace. Over in Laurel County, the water from Laurel Lake is starting to come over the spillway. A lot of people are trying to are stopping to take pictures just like this one, but it is always good to make sure you keep your distance when you do. As the water continues to rise, it will get deeper. Crews are currently working on a mudslide in the Sandlick community. That's over in Letcher County. That slide happened on Thursday on top of Camp Branch Mountain. This is the second slide on the mountain this week. There's currently one lane of the road open for drivers to get through. To find out more updates about the road conditions, you can check our website, WYMT.com. And you head over to our website. We also have a list of different mudslides and rock slides in our area. The more the rain, the more the mudslides. Letcher County officials say they've seen more than 30 slides in the past 12 days. WIMT's Laura McCourt talked with county officials about how communities there are being affected. A story all too familiar in the past two weeks for Eastern Kentucky. Uh, February 12th, about uh, 5 p.m., we had a massive slide in the Ulvey community. And this was just one of many. We have heard of or worked 30, 35 slides. Deputy Judge Jason Back says it's not only the county roads that are taking the hard hit. We've got numerous slides on the state level, the city level, as well as you know us on the county level. But all they can do right now is clear a path. We just simply can't fix them until it dries up. Back says they have crews working day and night since the slide started. We're doing everything that we can possibly do with the manpower, the equipment we have, but we just cannot work this mud. But it is beginning to take a financial toll. It's almost more of a struggle than we can defeat with the equipment and the, the dollars we have available right now. Even a small slide like this could easily cost up to $3,000 after labor and equipment fees. Our guys is working a tremendous amount of hours right now. With more rain on the way. We can't beat Mother Nature. They are trying their best to get their communities cleaned up. In Letcher County, Lauren McCourt, WYMT Mountain News. Now, officials did say if you need to report a mudslide or a road issue there, you can give them a call. You can find their numbers on our website, WIMT.com. And just a reminder, you can always find the latest weather conditions on the WIMT weather app. If you don't already have it, you can see live radar and zoom into your neighborhood. You can also learn about warnings and advisories in your area. You can find it in the Apple and Google Play stores. Kentucky State Police say a man was stabbed to death late Friday night in Knox County. Police say Charles C. Davidson, who is 55 from Corbin, was pronounced dead after being taken to Barberville ARH. Police say he was stabbed multiple times with a kitchen knife at a house in the Walker community of Knox County. Troopers say they arrested Jeffrey Todd Hammonds from London in connection to the murder after he went to another house in Corbin. Local law enforcement assisted us with this and we was able to surround the residents, call for him out. At that time, he did uh, walk out, surrender without any incident, and was placed in custody. The Knox County coroner pronounced Davison dead at the hospital. Police charged Hammonds with murder and tampering with physical evidence. In Laurel County, deputies are asking for help finding a man who went missing on February 16th. This is Arnold Maggard. He's 32 years old. Maggard was last spotted off Fairston Road in Laurel County. Anyone with information is asked to call the Laurel County Sheriff's Department. Prosecutors say the man charged in the death of a Louisville Metro police detective took prescription narcotics before the crash that killed Deidre Mingedote. Former Metro sewer district driver Roger Burdett faces seven charges, including aggravated DUI. In court Friday, prosecutors said Burdett was under the influence of hydrocodone. His bond was also lowered in court. Burdett pleaded not guilty to those charges. Heading back to flooding issues, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers Nashville District plans on stepping up releases at Wolf Creek Dam. This comes as Lake Cumberland approaches a record. Currently, the dam is spilling out water at a rate of more than 36,000 cubic feet per second. 
That will be increased gradually to 45,000 cubic feet per second, and that will be by early next week. The largest amount of water ever released was back in January of 1974. And just south of us, Tennessee, also dealing with flooding issues this weekend. Here's video from Knox County. Multiple roads are closed in Knoxville due to the heavy rain. Police say at least 98 roads in the city are closed at this time. A Knoxville Fire Department fire truck was also stranded by flood water in Fountain City this morning. Also something to watch out for on I-40. There's a major detour on the North Carolina-Tennessee state line. That's due to a rock slide. And then also in Tennessee, a man and his pets were rescued in Loudoun County this morning. The sheriff's office rescued the man from his front porch. They were not able to get to the home, so they began a water rescue. People in several stranded vehicles in the area were also rescued today. And due to that flooding issue, due to some of those flooding issues, Zoo Knoxville is closed for the day. Workers say part of the west end of the zoo was underwater this morning. There were also power outages at the zoo. A spokesperson says all the animals are safe and dry, but the zoo will stay closed for the safety of its visitors. And just a little sports update. Kentucky basketball was back in action this afternoon. The Wildcats cruised to victory over the Auburn Tigers, winning 82-53. With the win, John Calipari takes sole possession of second place for most wins in Kentucky's history with 298 victories behind only eight off Rupp. Sports director Marcus Browning will have much more along with highlights and reaction coming up in just a few minutes in sports. And still to come on Mountain News Weekend Edition, some local art was on display in Leatherwood. We'll check it out. And the second round of rain will move in tonight, bringing heavy rain and gusty winds. We'll talk about those details next.